Hi, I'm Ernie Conover. This month, I thought we'd talk about making pepper mills and salt shakers, which are a great addition to any kitchen. And I'm going to show it by using this crush grind mechanism from Rockler. And to install this in our wood blank, we're going to drill it first, and we're going to have to drill two different holes. The first is an inch and five eighths hole to a depth of inch and three eighths. And then the rest of the distance, we will drill to a diameter of inch and one half. We are also going to scrape a little groove one and three quarter inches from the bottom of the pepper mill. I've chucked a two and a quarter inch square by six and a half inch long piece of cherry in the lathe for the body of my pepper mill. I've caught a center which I laid out in the exact center on each end and clamped it in a four jaw chuck. But by catching it with a center here, I ensure that the center of this billet is in axis with the lathe. I'll now withdraw the tailstock, take out the center, and I'm putting the tailstock ram exactly on one inch so that I can accurately judge how deep I drill. I'm using a fish wave cutter bit that's part of a pepper mill set sold by Rockler. And I'm using the Morse taper extension in that set so that I will go directly into my lathe and I don't have to use a drill chuck. I'll now start up my lathe to moderate speed. And I'm just going to bring that up till I just touch like that. I'm going to now lock and now I'll simply advance an inch and three eighths. Three eighths. Very nice. Now as you drill deeper, it's nice to have an air hose to just blow these chips out of there. Notice I have a face shield on and I'm putting my hand here so I can't blow the chips in my eyes. This is an inch and a half drill. Going in there, finding where I left off. Start up the lathe. It's a very good idea to clear the chips regularly when you start to get down deep like this. I've seen drills so impacted in the wood that you had to split it in two to get the drill out. It's looking good. We've drilled to about here and I will drill the other way from the other end after I scrape a groove in here to catch the paw on the pepper mill mechanism. This is a scraper I ground from an old mortise chisel and it allows me to cut a groove in a cylinder at any place I want to do it. And to get it an inch and three quarters from the opening here, I've drawn a line with a felt tip pen at that distance from the edge. Starting up the lathe, I've positioned the rest a bit above center because I want, I get a better dragging cut off the edge. And I'm going to go in to that spot. There. One last little task before we turn this around to drill the rest of the way is to put a little opening here to open it up to a little bit bigger diameter so that this ring here registers about five eighths of an inch up from the bottom of the mill so that we hide this and it'll set level on the table. I've got a marking gauge set to five eighths of an inch and I'm just going to put that right around there 
like that. I have a nice sharp line inside. And I'll take just a little V-shaped scraper. And I'm going to scrape about a 64th out of there. This is going to be very much. Again, I'm above center. All right, I've chucked this in the turnaround the same way I did before by catching it with a center before I tighten the chuck. Nice. We joined up well. There isn't a line there. Now that I have a hole through it and sanded, I'm going to make sure the mill fits okay. There. Snapped into place. Sits. Doesn't rock. Mechanism works. Now to get that back out of there, you want to take a wood stick that's a little longer than the shaft. Set it on the flange and just tap that with a hammer or a mallet in this case. And we're now ready to turn the outside. This will be the bottom of the pepper mill. This will be the top. Now I've changed the jaws in my chuck to what are called pin jaws. They're a smaller jaw. They're good for holding small rounds down to about three eighths of an inch, like dowel. And I've put a cone on my robust chuck here that allows me to center larger diameters. And now I'm just putting the ends of the jaws into this so I'll be able to turn right up to here and turn this to the final shape without touching the face of these jaws. And I'm going to leave this chuck in place. But this has put that bore that we put through this piece on perfect center axis of the lathe. So the outside will now be concentric with the inside. Okay, I've roughed out the cap here. It wants to be a bit of a loose fit because that's got to hold up with changes in seasonal moisture and everything else. So our next task is to take a 15 16 drill and we're going to drill to the depth of one inch. Now we're going to check up a 7 16 drill and drill just a little bit. Very nice. I put a piece of scrap wood that was a cut off from the job in a four jaw chuck here and I've scraped a pocket in it that fits the tenon on our cap. And by lining this center up on the center I can see from the cutoff, I can just put a little bit of pressure on that. And now I'll take a little mallet. There. I've got it running perfectly. And get out my spindle gouge and finish this job. There's our finished cap. Our piece snaps into place as it should. Well, here's our finished pepper mill and salt shaker. 
I give complete directions with all of the bore diameters and tools that you will need to make these in this month's issue of Woodworker's Journal. There's one final little detail I need to share with you, and that's if you don't have extremely good press fits with all the plastic parts that the mechanisms are housed in, you will find that these will slip when you try to grind pepper. So they pretty much have to be epoxied in, especially anyone using imperial bits, because they're made to metric standards. And the ten, imperial sizes tend to be loose for these. With that said, you don't really have to scrape the grooves. You need to just epoxy these in and they'll work fine. However, I do feel that scraping grooves gives you a little better glue area for the epoxy. And the metal machinist in me just can't bring myself not to scrape the grooves in there. At any rate, have fun with the project. Uh, this is Ernie Conover saying thanks for visiting. I'll see you next time.